Hello there, my friend. Welcome to Talk Music Talk with Boyce, another episode. Thank you for checking it out. If this happens to be your first time checking it out, Talk Music Talk is a weekly music interview podcast where I have long-form conversations with people connected to music from different genres, different backgrounds, both established and emerging singers, singer-songwriters, music therapists, music journalists. And on this episode, I had the pleasure of speaking to another artist. That I have interviewed before. It is the return of one of my favorite artists, singer songwriter Bo Boric. I last interviewed him on episode 138 for his debut album, Different Generations. I will put the link in the show notes for that conversation. Coincidentally, my last remote interview was with him when he was in Santa Fe three years ago. I am in New York. He is now in Durham, North Carolina. We had a Zoom conversation to talk about his new wonderful album realistic weather in this conversation we catch up we talk about life under quarantine we talk about him completing realistic weather under quarantine we talk about the writing of it the themes also we discuss his being vulnerable in his music we talk about what is home when you have lived in four different states in just a few years like he has done and after the conversation you will hear three songs three of my favorites from realistic weather puppy prograde and santa fe here it is without further ado my conversation with bo boric enjoy so what's it? I've, I've asked everybody this on the Instagram yeah. uh, story, Instagram live shows. What's it been like being Bo Bork in quarantine? Um, I have to admit it's been pretty, for the majority of the time, it's been pretty chill mm-hmm. uh, to, use, to use that word. Um, I work at an elementary school and was fortunate enough that Durham Public Schools is allowing the uh, uh, the instructional assistants to actually work from home in a way mm-hmm. that's uh, professional development. So I like don't have anything really to do for the kids. It's all mm-hmm. about like professional development. So I've been reading a lot about like really some important topics and like okay. listening to important uh, podcasts about important topics so it's been it's been very informative and like transformative Mm -hmm. in that way but um this week i had like three or four three or four days of just like straight fever Mm -hmm. having an actual like 102 degree temperature oh really okay um and so i was scared that i had the the covid but i went to the doctor and i actually have a tick born illness so <laughs> it's better it's better maybe than the oh, virus how do you treat that how do antibiotics you... okay yeah okay. so that's why i actually had to cancel on uh on tuesday because i had a i was sick very sick. okay <laughs> how, how do you feel now uh i feel like way better okay yeah okay is yeah. that from walking like in woods or something like that or you're I, I hate up? to admit how stupid we were. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I figure woods are like the safest place to go. Like, well, for people. Right. Yeah. We went to the woods and we just thought our dog was so cute walking mm-hmm. through the tall grass. She just yeah. seemed to love it. And I just didn't, we brought her home and I didn't even think about ticks. And I saw one on her. I'm like, Oh, there's a tick. I'll pull it off. I pull it off. Got rid of it didn't think really to check that hard for more mm-hmm. and for the next two nights we just kept finding them in our bed and i found okay. like it was it had bitten me so okay. it was just really stupid no, no, okay. like, yeah, <laughs> how's the dog she is uh she's a nut uh-huh. <laughs> she's a crazy dog but she's um such a sweet dog we love mm-hmm. her Okay, yeah. that's cool. So during this time, it looks like you. Uh, I think in one of your posts on Instagram, you had that you've been working on this album during the quarantine. Is that for the days? yeah? The majority, like I would say, probably about half of it mm-hmm. was recorded during like the first two weeks of quarantine. Okay, when did you start working on it? It's been a slow. It's been a very slow recording mm-hmm. process um, for about. It's been like for over a year. I, like I started it tw- 2018 in November. So I've just been slowly chipping away. And yeah. then having 
having like kind of like light work and you know I'm not allowed to go socialize so like yeah. what am I going to do uh-huh. yeah so it's been I've been like extremely fortunate during mm-hmm. this time okay so by starting it does that mean you started the recording then or you, I mean from like songwriting conception and all that the songwriting started before the previous record okay had been released mm-hmm. so I had been writing songs for three years um but uh yeah the recording process has been about a year and a half but mm-hmm. really most of it just happened in the last month okay so for the songwriting does it start with you did you have like what the concept of the whole album would be first or you just started like one song leads to the next like how do you usually start uh yeah it just kind of i wrote a couple songs and like they kind of had a loose theme and then the you know subsequent three years of my life had a had a theme <laughs> to it too uh which was the idea of home and like uh what that means an expansion of that kind of idea of like just beyond the physical home or like the city where you grew up it's mm-hmm. like your body your relationships like just your whole life in itself so um yeah it just kind of organically became a loose concept okay album. yeah is that that come about because you had moved what four times or lived in yeah. four different states in what two years or yeah like if you took a snapshot 2017 we were in oregon and then 2019 we had come all the way to north carolina okay yeah and then there was was what oregon i have it written down california (laughs) new mexico and then Mm -hmm. now north carolina what what prompted all those moves um different reasons for each one we had like a like the band that i was in in oregon like had like a change and we just kind of like kind of fell apart Mm -hmm. we hated our jobs and we just kind of wanted something new. So we went back home, which is why we went to California. And then from California, we knew that was going to be not a permanent yeah. thing. We lived with my, my dad. So we like decided to move out after like seven months and we just threw our resumes across the country, you know, in the little like <laughs> liberal bubbles across the country. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we like put them in like Austin and, Asheville, North Carolina, and we did uh, Boulder, Colorado, and Santa Fe, and we said whoever got the first job, that's where we'd move. Okay. And my partner got her job, and like two days later, I got my job, like two doors down. Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, we just moved. Like we were gone. I don't know, it was like within a month. Okay, and that was North Carolina. That was off to Santa Fe. That was Santa Fe. Okay. Yeah. So. And- <laughs> Uh, this is a shorter story because I don't need to get into the details. Okay. But, uh, I'll put a flow chart in the show notes, but go, carry yeah, on. That'll, that'll be useful. Um, uh, we, there was some like family uh, issues that mm-hmm. um, kind of resulted in a house needing to be sold and a marriage separation. So we like moved out to help Caitlin's mom okay. sell the house. Um, yeah. So it was after a year. Mm-hmm. In a few months in Santa Fe. Okay. And we landed out in North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. Uh, how do you like North, North Carolina? I mean, it's, it's so different from everything that I've been used to. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's all in a great way. Just obviously humidity wise. Initially, it's what you first notice, <laughs> especially coming from Santa Fe. You're just like, uh-huh. whoa. I, yeah. I mean, Cause it's hot, but it's a different kind of hot. It's yes, very yeah. um, but it's okay. I'm like I. I think Durham's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love Durham. Yeah. What's the music scene like there? Have you had a chance to get into that? Or uh, I started shows? to. I mm-hmm. started to, and then this whole you know yeah, yeah. mess it all up for. I mean, not just for me, obviously, mm-hmm. but for literally everyone <laughs> in the world. Just so. you go. <laughs> yeah, it's going. It's not to get me. Uh, yeah, it's been. I think the dirt, like the Durham music scenes really cool um i've met a, like more you know quote unquote famous kind of acts than i've ever met before and like they're all just like super sweet and mm-hmm. um met a lot of people who i was trying to 
get to be in a band with. And we had practiced a few times and like getting some momentum recording was happening. And mm-hmm. then it was just shut down. Yeah. Which, um, you know, that's the story. <laughs> Do you, you miss the band aspect as opposed to doing I, stuff on your own? I, per, I mean, I personally love the writing aspect on my own. It's a very personal process for me. So mm-hmm. the writing is something that I, I, I have a really hard time doing it with other people, okay. but um, I've never been in like a full, full band. Yeah. One in, in Portland was just, uh, I don't want to say just, but we're, we're a trio with two guitars and three voices. And I always wanted like a bass, a bass guitar and a drummer. Mm-hmm. And that's what I had going. I had another guitar and I had a bass and I had a drum and we were, we we're going to like get going. But, uh-huh. um, I had it all lined up. Right? Yeah. So I still don't know what it's like to perform live <laughs> in a full band. So. One of these days, right? Because you haven't done any solo stuff, have you? You haven't had a chance to do that, right? Like solo I, shows recently? Not, I mean, all last, not all last year. I did like probably six solo shows last mm-hmm. year to like three people watching a basketball game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Those aren't very fun either. Uh, no, no, no. That. I did a book <laughs> reading once. It was, uh, this was years ago in uh, Pittsburgh in, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Barnes & Noble during, next to the cafe. They set you up yeah. there. Uh-huh. And it was one person. One person came, right? <laughs> for, like, it was your book? Yeah, for my book. One person cool. came. And then, like, the people <laughs> in the cafe, I clearly was annoying them by reading. Because I said oh. to the one person, I'm like, you know, I don't have to read. I'm fine. Like, oh, they're like, no, no, they insisted. And yes, I understand. What <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, um, it's something else. God. For the moving part, when you live in those different places, do you, or is that, does that suit your personality? Are you like a wanderlust personality living in different areas? Or is that like um, tough moving from place to place like that? I think I, I'm not tough. I don't mm-hmm. think I'm, I'm really not tough in many in any way I can think of Um, moving is hard. It's I think the first time we moved was like exciting Mm -hmm. to Santa Fe was really exciting. But like after the first month, all that like newness, that's good. Mm -hmm. Just fades away. Yeah. So like seeing all the newness that is bad, which is not having a community, not knowing anything or anyone. And that takes like, um, it took us, I mean, surprisingly less than a year to find like a really solid group of friends. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we had to move from there (laughs) um, as soon as we got those friends. Uh And then, you know, we had to do it all over again in Durham. And like, it's, it took like a good, a good year to like find some people that were like, you know, like at least a good Good um, amount okay. of like people that you can hang out with. Do you learn anything about yourself uh, during those moves? I've I think I've learned too much about myself. <laughs> <laughs> really like what? You no, know. uh, just like I'm a I'm a baby. I'm <laughs> just like I like really. I don't know. I I learned that, like I can be pretty obsessive, and like especially not knowing anybody not hanging out with people like my brain really gets fixated on like one thing and one Mm -hmm. idea. And like, that's pretty much the main subject of the song Santa Fe and the new album is like living in Santa Fe. But really in my mind, I'm like, I'm living back in Oregon. Okay. Um, That's what the whole song is about. It's just like wanting to be somewhere else. Okay. So it's like not being present where you're like at yeah you're currently okay and you, you realize that just then like when you <laughs> after the move <laughs> uh it i mean it was i don't know i have like a full journal full of me just being like oh i this morning i was so sad i'm so lonely blah 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 uh-huh. and it's like i was reading it twice i'm like oh my God, you just, <laughs> what is wrong with you? So when we came out to Durham, I was like, I am going to just try to be present here. Yeah. I don't want to like set a leave date. Cause like, you know, we, we both want to move back to the West at some point, but I don't want to like push that. I want to yeah. like embrace being here. Cause I like, I feel like I really missed out a okay. lot 
when I was in Santa Fe. Okay. And yeah. so how does all that figure itself into the new album? It, it Realistic really, weather. Yeah. Realistic weather is, it is just an amalgamation of all the people and all the places that were and are in my life. Like, th- you know, throughout the four States that we lived in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of follows that trajectory of it starts in California. It's not super linear, but like, you know, there's obviously New Mexico in there and there's Oregon, obviously, and uh, North Carolina. All, it's all in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like this journey. Is there like a thread through the different states that you see? I Or the way you feel in the states? I didn't put a... Uh, put the songs in order of a thread. I, I could, but I, I kind of liked the, the way that this like flowed um, musically. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you, I think one can draw uh, a thread. Like the first one, uh, the song's called Half Color. It's about my childhood home and like returning to it as an adult and realizing that it's like, it's not really what it was that yeah, I thought it was yeah. um, before. And yeah, so I mean, like my whole family life has changed over the last few years, which was mm-hmm. like really the why I wrote the song in the first place. Um, and I mean, we're all at peace with it now. Yeah. And I think we're all at a healthier, better place. So like three years ago, I was having a hard time with it, but now it's, yeah, I think it's yeah. all okay. <laughs> okay. Are, are there themes that pop up in the album? Themes? I yeah. think the, the main... I mean, my main themes are are just like relationships, mm-hmm. um, but the the biggest theme I think is like trying to tie in the idea of what home is and like home in your body and like just where you're, you're living, even like your job, um, like what you do at eight hours a day, five days a week is like um, that's a in itself a type of home. So like it kind of spans big parts of my life and just kind of like the ideas that other people, like everyone has to do like jobs and houses and homes and family and Mm -hmm. yeah. Aging, you know, all that kind of stuff. So what is home for you? What feels like home? You know, quarantine's really uh, changed that Uh Um, or uh, not change it, but uh, made it more complex. Um, Definitely. This is so cliche, what I'm about to say. <laughs> it makes me not want to say it. So it must be true. <laughs> it's uh, your friends, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Friends. Uh, people that are in your life and people you can commune with and hug. Mm-hmm. What a what a novel idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I like... I think what I came away from writing the album was like being in a place that you're excited about, but also allowing that place to change and like allowing yourself to change and like just being more patient. Mm -hmm. I think like I have a real hard time with patience and you have to also, I don't know. I feel like I have to be patient with my home also. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Were you asking more of like what physical like city is my home? <laughs> no, no, emotional <laughs> state was good. Emotional state, yeah. yeah that was good. <laughs> How do you see between this album and the previous album, uh, dif- different generations, like similarities? Are they different? Do you have goals going into the new album that it would be different than that one, the previous? Um, I didn't have any other, I didn't have any different goals. I mm-hmm. think I just went in with my new songs, just kind of like stockpiling songs and trying to, uh, you know, make things that were different from, you know, this minute is different from the last minute of this same song. And like, this song's different from the first song, like just trying to make things that are dynamic as a unit of mm-hmm. songs. And I think, I mean, that's just generally my goal when I make music and, it's, I think this album is just a more mature version of the last one. It just kind of chronicles my life, just like the first, just like the first one did. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one was like about what I knew at the time, which was just my relationships. I 
don't didn't know what else to write about. Yeah, yeah. This one is like at the same time of me branching out from my comfort zone. Like I think the songs also kind of were branching out. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried a lot more lyrically, um, trying to be you know try to use similes, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, is a classic tool in uh-huh. writing, which uh, <laughs> I never really <laughs> tried to use before. Uh, so yeah, I was trying to get a little more flowery with my language and like try to be a little more, you know, put a little more of myself out there. Okay. Um, say more things mm-hmm. that were like meaningful. I don't know. Okay. Is there uh do you feel vulnerable doing that? Putting Absolutely. yourself out there more? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think that's a good thing. I, I think if I didn't feel vulnerable, then I wasn't really saying anything mm. to like be paid attention to. Um who knows if I am, but mm. maybe I'm just <laughs> maybe I'm just feel scared and vulnerable uh, generally. Uh, but I I don't know. I feel like there's some nuggets in there that are worth listening to. Yeah, yeah. What is your uh, when you're recording everything yourself? What is your uh, procedure in tackling that? Uh, what do you start with? Um, I always start with guitar, mm-hmm. um, and I just have this like cheap little audio interface and. I have a very expensive uh, audio program that I bought, which was uh-huh. not the right one to buy. Uh, <laughs> and then I just like, I just did it in this room in this rental and mm-hmm. here. So it's not very like high tech. It's not, I would hate if an audio engineer came in and saw what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they could hear it in the quad. Like, oh yeah, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. And that's always my fear. It's like, oh, it doesn't sound professional. And you know what? I'm not a professional audio engineer. So, and I don't have money to go pay one. Yeah. So. yeah. I, it sounded great to me. I mean, I'm not a professional audio engineer, but it sounded beautiful to me. <laughs> that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yes. People who listen to it thinks it sounds good. So did you teach yourself all this, how to record? Yeah. I don't, I like, wouldn't, the internet, you know, like mm-hmm. one day I was like, oh, how do, maybe I should look up how to record the drums instead of just <laughs> guessing. Uh, and so I sp- looked up specifically how to record a drum kit with mm-hmm. two mics. And there was yeah. an article about it. And man, it really made the, I thought made the drum sound way better. Yeah. Yeah. When did you start uh, making music and all that? I started playing guitar back in when I was 12, I think. So it was like 2003. Mm-hmm. I think I started writing music when I was 14 or 15. So like 2006 high school era. Yeah. And I remember I came up with like what I thought was like a sweet guitar line. Mm-hmm. And I showed my mom and she's like, I think that already exists. <laughs> <laughs> I just like love, sh- like looking back, uh, I, I know that I felt like, Oh, like not fully crushed, but I was like, Oh, like that kind of hurts a little. Yeah. Uh, but I really appreciate that honesty uh, <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> but you went back in you kept at it. I did. I also yeah. left that guitar riff alone. I know okay. I didn't revisit that. <laughs> I did keep trying. To avoid a lawsuit later. Or yeah. yeah. I'm sure it was like some simple smoke on the water or something. Yeah, yeah. Where were you? Uh, you, you were self-taught? Uh, I have to credit one person who taught me the chords and like mm-hmm. inspired me. Uh, my old neighbor back in uh, Santa Cruz, Owen, taught me a bunch of chords. Um, so he's like the person who really gave me any sort of tools as far as the knowledge of playing the instrument. And my grandmother gave me my first guitar, which was uh, a classical guitar uh, with metal strings on it, which is really not, that's supposed to have nylon strings. And I like looked at it later and it's like like very warped that reason. But like without her, and without Owen and like, like my whole family, like mm-hmm. was so supportive in it, but like beyond the chords, I was self-taught. Okay. And when did you start writing songs? Uh, very, very emo songs. Started uh-huh. 
like 16 years old, okay. you know, 2007, about my internet girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad situation for everybody. Don't have one of those. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> through MySpace? <laughs> no, it was, from, okay. it was not MySpace. It was uh, <laughs> Myyearbook.com. Did oh, it, okay. anyone remember that? I feel like it was a dream mm-hmm. that I had, but it, I'm pretty sure it was real. Okay. So, <laughs> do, are those songs existing anywhere? Or? Um, those are tucked away. Oh, okay. <laughs> so when did you <laughs> when did you write a song? You're like, okay, I'm really proud of this. This feels right. When I mean, I was entirely proud of those songs mm-hmm. when I wrote them, but I don't think I was proud in retrospect of a song until I was 22, mm-hmm. like graduated college. Okay. I, was, I think I was 23 even. It was like the first song I wrote post-college after taking like that four year break. Um, and that, that was finally, at least I was mature enough to like realize like, Oh, this is different. This has at least personal meaning to me. So mm-hmm. like, I still think the song is like a decent song. Okay. What was it about that song that it had the personal meaning? Yeah. It's just about my, I mean, my current relationship mm-hmm. but at the time. Yeah. Just like some struggles that we were having and yeah, it felt like I was trying to be really honest in the lyrics okay. and I find that to be, you know, like I said, like I said earlier, just uh, where any sort of importance lies or any like, reason to listen is like when someone's being honest Mm -hmm. did you uh you said you four years you took off from making music that was while you were in college yeah i yeah i like went to school in davis and i went to school in portland and like for those three years i like did not i hardly picked up the guitar i just didn't think i had the like i didn't have the time but i did have the time i know i had the time Mm -hmm. i just didn't feel like i had the time to do it. Uh, but I really spent a lot of time climbing, bouldering, mm-hmm. just such a fad thing I was into for oh, so really? long. I spent so much time doing it. I could have just been writing. <laughs> Did you miss it? The songs writing and all that? Did I miss uh, writing songs? Yeah. At the time? Like, it was the only thing I wanted to do, but mm-hmm. I like, it was like, I knew that it would, I wanted to give it my all and I didn't have my all to give at the time. So So it's like all or nothing type thing you felt. That is entirely me. Okay. Which I don't like about Mm -hmm. myself is like all or nothing. Okay. So once you graduated, you got into, you picked it back up and started. Yeah. I abandoned my improv team that I had joined, Uh started doing music. They were very understanding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how did it feel getting back into it? You it, wrote this great first song right <laughs> after. <laughs> it felt great. Like my, I graduated and my buddy graduated. He was in Los Angeles and he moved up to Portland. And so we had been uh, in a band together before we had respectively moved to the towns we went to school in. And so when he moved up to Portland, we like jumped back in a new band and started playing music again. And I mean, looking back at that time now, it was like the most, it was so chill. Like it was Mm -hmm. so, I was so the freest I have ever felt was like working part-time at a coffee shop, Uh like 800 bucks and somehow saving money (laughs) and like, uh, being in a band and like writing songs and like, yeah. I don't know, eating free bread that we'd go uh-huh. find. <laughs> like, just dream. Living the dream. But, uh, yeah. But it was the dream. Like I would, I had money. I like buy things. I don't have money anymore. With that. <laughs> Are you constantly writing? Is it like a thing for you? It fluctuates. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So like for, so I wrote that song after, or like right around the release of different generations, the first song on realistic weather. And I I think I stopped for like the entirety of being in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And then toward the end of being in Santa Fe, I tried to start picking it up again. 
Okay. And so most of the songs were written in Durham and like, even though they were, you know, from journal entries from Santa Fe. So it's like kind of writing with writing that I had made in the past. Okay. So, Do you eat journal every day? Is that a technique of yours? Um, if I'm, if I'm particularly emotional at a, any stretch of time, I will usually journal every day. Mm-hmm. Not, it's not a rule, but it's something that I like to keep track of. I okay. guess. Yeah. And uh, how many songs did you have for the new album and whittled it down? Uh, I had 12, 12, I think, mm-hmm. 12 songs. And so I whittled it down to was that nine. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't usually spend too much time on a song that I don't think is going to make it. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't also don't like to throw away songs. That always feels horrible. To yeah. Do. <laughs> so yeah. I, so you'll I find know. a use for them somewhere. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. So you're, are you writing now? Are you thinking about the next album too soon? I have, I mean, like, like I, just like the last one, I have an, just one kind of nugget of an idea for a song. Mm-hmm. And then, kind of an idea of how I'm going to record this one a little differently, and that's about it. Like, mm-hmm. kind of an idea of like maybe what I want it to sound and feel like. Maybe get a little more experimental. I think I, I think I went toward the like, the indie rock kind of feel that I've that I love from a lot of like new bands like Big Thief and Sasami and like pale hound like those mm-hmm. are like big bands for me uh in the moment so I like you know was trying to like follow this like i was like a big classic rock kid yeah yeah i hate to admit when i was a when i was a teen so yeah. like there's like I had a, a rock part phase of me too, that dude. loves that <laughs> um yeah yeah so classic rock who are some of your classic rock favorites dude? uh i think led zeppelin would be the, uh, yeah, the yeah. top i had like i I remember Brilliant. two two years straight of Led Zeppelin, um, <laughs> which I'm so unique for. <laughs> <laughs> saying Led Zeppelin's great is like I don't know. Saying that sand is plentiful, I guess. But um, yeah, I yeah. You have any uh, touchstones for uh, what the next album would be like? Um. Like uh, like other like, artists, yeah. Other albums, uh, just a little more experimental. Yeah, it's. A, I don't know. I, I can't really pinpoint it to like other mm-hmm. artists, but I want it to be like. I guess I can like the song on my album. The song's called uh, "I've Been a Mirror," and that song has like an audio recording in the back of me trudging through icy snow and like, it's very like kind of crunchy and like mm-hmm. the whole song's really like tactile. Um, and so I kind of like want to really lean into that kind of tactile kind okay. of feel, but also like incorporate some like cool electronic sounds on a, a bit of tape. Like mm-hmm. I want to do it on like a cassette, which like maybe when I start, I will be regretting this conversation. <laughs> so her, it's really difficult. Um, so I haven't tried it yet, but okay. like that's kind of my my idea. Okay. Well, I'm sure if you go on YouTube, you can figure out yeah the proper way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I should look it up before. I try. <laughs> as soon as we finish this interview, you can go yeah, look it up. It it. Yeah. God. So the album, as I told you, the album's wonderful. I uh, really yeah, thanks for enjoyed. listening. Sure, sure. I think it just and the more people listen to it, it, just keeps getting better and better. So I think that's a great sign. Oh, a yeah. great album. Yeah, I'm glad. I've I've gotten some some good feedback from it, so that's that's been nice. Cool, cool. So is there anything I leave out, Bo? You want to add? Um, I don't. I mean. No, I no, okay. it's good. Uh, yeah. Okay, best place for uh, people to check you out online. Um, music. I mean, I get like micro cents for plays on Spotify that I uh, the <laughs> app. So that's that's a nice place for uh, <laughs> to listen. But 
<laughs> honestly, if anyone's listening, like wherever they can find it is, mm-hmm. is nice. So yeah. And if, and please like people should download it. It's out for free. Like I'm not, I'm not asking for anything because mm-hmm. it's felt kind of like a group effort, even though I recorded everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people that helped support me through this whole this whole three years of like being in a bunch of different states and like going through so much like emotional turmoil of yeah. the moving of like that I put on myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's for everybody. So cool, cool, man. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure as usual, Bo. And I uh, wish all the best for Thanks, you. Boys. Yeah. Good luck with all your, your interviews. Your thank you. Thank talent. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Good to talk to you again. Yeah, Till next time. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.
Heard three from Realistic Weather from Bo Boric. Puppies started it off, Prograde and Santa Fe. I love the entire album, so you should check it out. Plus, his debut, Different Generations. Get them both on Bandcamp. Link in the show notes, of course. And plus, I'll put a link to his Instagram. I am online, talkmusictalk.com, for more podcast information and to stream every single episode. Plus, you can find me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at this is voice and on Instagram during the quarantine I have been doing IG live interviews with past guests so check that out on Instagram at this is voice 
couple of requests for you. Please subscribe to the show on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many other places. Just search for Talk Music Talk. You can also find the podcast on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash this is boys. Also, there is a free app for you wherever you like to get your apps. Again, just search for Talk Music Talk. All the links in the show notes, of course. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, and there will be a next time. This one's for you, Liz. Liz.